The way you plan a Magic Kingdom visit for 2024 is going to be totally different than planning one last year, and that's why we're here today, giving you an ultimate rundown of what's up and coming, as well as what classic tips and tricks are still going to ring true for your future vacation. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Now we are hitting the ground running this new year with an ultimate guide to Magic Kingdom. If this is gonna be your year to visit one of the most popular theme parks of all time, then you're gonna need to know what's new, what's on the horizon, and what's gonna make your upcoming vacation absolutely, without a doubt, 1000% the best. Today's video is going to have lots of good info coming at you really quickly, so if you want your very own digital guide helping you keep track of all the tips and tricks and extras, even while you're inside the park, then be sure to scan the QR code you see on the screen now, or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Magic Kingdom for our free ultimate guide to MK. First up, let's take a trip around Magic Kingdom together, just so you can get a good idea of where each land is located and what highlight attractions you're gonna find in each place. This is always my problem when I go to a new theme park is I don't know where everything is and I don't know how to get from here to there the fastest. So Magic Kingdom is the home of Cinderella Castle. I know you're gonna see castle merch representing Disney World as a whole throughout your visit, but the only place you're gonna find said iconic castle is this OG park. Along with Cindy's place, you've also got six different lands to explore explore for now, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. We'll talk about the future later on. You'll start your day walking right down the middle of Main Street, USA, a turn of the century scene inspired by Walt Disney's childhood home of Marceline, Missouri. You're not going to find any must-do rides here, but you are going to find plenty of shops and a few decent restaurants too. Oh, and you're also going to have a fabulous view of the castle, so be sure to take plenty of pictures, but also watch out for the trolley tracks because they will trip you up if you're not paying attention. Now, let's do something a little different today and work our way around the rest of the park counterclockwise from right to left, which means you're going to head into Tomorrowland next. Tomorrowland is a bright neon enhanced retro vision of the future where you're going to find attractions like Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, Space Mountain, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, and the brand new Tron Light Cycle Run. But if you want to see this area from up above all in one ride through, be sure to hop aboard the slow going Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover, which is probably my favorite ride in the whole park, not gonna lie. Oh, and on top of the People Mover is Astro Orbiter. Next is the ever popular Fantasyland, which is loaded with all sorts of family friendly rides. You can fly through the air with Dumbo or over London on Peter Pan's flight. You can celebrate the fact that it truly is a small world after all aboard the happiest little cruise that ever sailed, and then immediately jump on the back of a horse to ride Prince Charming's regal carousel. Honestly, with all there is to do in this section of the park, you could easily eat up half your day right here. Fantasyland is also the home of the headliner attraction, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And lines for this one stay pretty long all day, so you may want to consider getting an individual lightning lane for it or trying to get on it at the very end of the day. You can also rope drop it too. More on all of those terms later. <laughs> right next to Fantasyland is Liberty Square, made as a tribute to America's early history. The Liberty Square Riverboat carries guests along the rivers of America into a bygone era. 999 Happy Haunts share a little of their own history inside the Haunted Mansion, which is located just around the corner from the Hall of Presidents. Heading on through Liberty Square, you're headed to Frontierland. Now, the Frontierland you're going to meet in 2024 is going to be a shell of its former and future self since this Wild West themed area is undergoing some major renovations right now with still more to come. But you'll still be able to take a river journey over to Tom Sawyer's Island and ride the wildest ride in the wilderness, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Finally, we're in Adventureland. This is the land where you can take a jungle cruise, channel your inner pirate of the Caribbean, fly on a magic carpet, climb to the top of the Swiss family treehouse, and sing along with some charming feathered friends in Walt Disney's enchanted tiki room. It's also where you're gonna get Dole Whip. So let's talk a little bit about what's new, what's coming, what's happening. 2023 was a big year for Magic Kingdom with lots of new and returning experiences that we're gonna be able to enjoy all throughout 2024. 
Take all the updates that happened over in Tomorrowland, for example, making it look less retro and more legitimately futuristic. Tomorrowland now has a new snack kiosk called Energy Bites, home to donuts, cold brew, and unique ice cream mochi flavors, a reimagined gift shop called the Tomorrowland Launch Depot, and the biggest addition of them all, the new high-speed coaster called Tron Light Cycle Run. Tron takes you on your very own two-wheeled light cycle to launch you into the grid for a race through a dark, computerized world, reaching speeds up to 59 miles per hour. Per the release of this video, Tron still uses a virtual queue system, meaning you can't just hop in a physical line for this ride. You gotta enter into the virtual queue on your My Disney Experience app, either at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. during the day of your visit. While virtual queues are getting a little easier to snag than they used to be when the ride first opened, they do still book up fast. So you wanna make sure you're logged into your account and ready to grab your spot in line before the virtual queue goes live. However, if you wanna skip the virtual queue hassle altogether, you can opt to pay Pay for an individual lightning lane. That's gonna cost you about $20 per person per ride through. While this ride is pretty short, the individual lightning lane can be more than worth it for some folks since you'll be able to choose your return time for the ride, meaning you can choose a later return time and guarantee that nighttime experience. Cause a ride on Tron during the day is fun, but at night it's truly awesome thanks to that epic glowing grid. 2023 was also the year we got to see the return of Magic Kingdom's nighttime spectacular, Happily Ever After, and the hole in our hearts were filled once more. Happily Ever After lights up the skies over Cinderella Castle every evening with dazzling fireworks set to fan favorite Disney songs. Plus, projections featuring Disney characters and iconic film moments can be seen on Cinderella Castle throughout the show, and those projections extend all the way down Main Street, USA. The exact times that Happily Ever After plays each evening switches up during the year based on the sun sets, so double check the My Disney Experience app or posted schedules inside the park to make sure you don't miss out on this must-see. In September, Mirabelle from Disney's animated film Encanto arrived in Magic Kingdom over at the Fairy Tale Gardens where Merida used to meet. Mirabelle typically meets with guests all throughout the day up until 3.45 p.m., usually. Check the My Disney Experience app for updated meet and greet times just in case things change when you're there. Keep in mind that Mirabelle does take plenty of breaks during the day, so don't be alarmed if she disappears for a bit while you're waiting in line. And as a last minute entry on the list, we got to shout out Haunted Mansion's newest ghost, the Hatbox Ghost, who finally materialized at the end of November. Disney told us he would be there in November and he came like right on November 30th. The Hatbox Ghost hangs out right next to the endless hallway, right at the beginning of the ride. So you won't get too terribly far into the ride before you see him in all his headless wonder. So what else is in store for Magic Kingdom in 2024 and beyond? Well, remember how I mentioned earlier that Frontierland's kind of a hot mess right now? That's because earlier in 2023, Splash Mountain closed to make way for that brand new log flume journey, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. This attraction is gonna be a re-theme of the old one, so you're still gonna be able to experience the same old 50-foot drop we love and fear, clearly. But now the ride story will be centered around Tiana from Princess and the Frog, who's gonna be hosting a Mardi Gras party for the people of New Orleans and you. While this ride isn't slated to open until later in 2024, we've seen a lot of progress being made over at this ride during the past few months, including a colorful new mural around the queue building. They're adding tons of flowers and greenery all over that big hill as well. Every day when we go over there, it looks like there's more and it's just getting a complete just rebrand. But that's not the end of Frontierland's changes for 2024. Disney's also announced that a new show is coming to Country Bear Jamboree in Magic Kingdom. The beloved bears will be learning an all-new act featuring their usual songs in new styles like country, rockabilly, and bluegrass. The new show, which will now be called Country Bear Musical Jamboree, will reflect classic variety shows found in Nashville, Tennessee. So while we know the Country Bears and Tiana will both be bringing us fresh new content during the new year, there are a couple of other Magic Kingdom additions that we know are in the works. We just don't know about any upcoming dates or too many concrete details, but we're gonna tell you about them anyway. For example, we learned during the 2023 Destination D23 convention that a new lounge themed to the classic Pirates of the Caribbean attraction is coming to Adventureland sometime in the future. Here, pirates of all ages will be able to gather together and swap stories of their journeys across the seven seas. And that includes you. Now the Barker Bird, also known as Pe 
Peg Leg Pete used to greet guests at the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction, but now he's going to be nesting at his newest home over at the soon-to-be lounge. Disney Imagineers are still working out the design details right now, so we'll have to update you once we learn more about this project, which hopefully will be ASAP, because I'm very excited. And then there's the biggest what-if blue sky project of Magic Kingdom, the new land just beyond Big Thunder Mountain. Bruce Vaughn, chief creative officer, Walt well, Disney Imagineering, what a cool job, right? Said that the Imagineering team is looking to expand the Magic Kingdom in their biggest park expansion yet, which would be on a similar scale to the expansions we've seen done in Animal Kingdom for Pandora and Hollywood Studios for Galaxy's Edge. We're still not quite sure what exactly this new area is going to include, though there were ideas thrown out involving Coco or the Disney villains. Can you imagine an entire villains area of a park, a whole villains land? But whatever this place turns out being will include the addition of new attractions and restaurants and shows and more. All right, how to stay in Magic Kingdom after it closes. I'm not going to beat around the bush, friends. Magic Kingdom is a busy, 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 busy park. Not only that, but it's the Disney World Park with the most rides, meaning it can be pretty difficult to accomplish every single thing just in one day. Unless, that is, you have an advantage. There are a few different ways you can stay in Magic Kingdom after the park closes for everyone else, giving you shorter ride wait times park-wide. Method number one, extended evening hours. While all Disney World Resort hotel guests will have access to early theme park entry, which will let you into the parks 30 minutes before they officially open. Guests staying at deluxe resort hotels can also use the extended evening hours benefit at select parks on certain nights. <laughs> Very vague there, including Magic Kingdom for up to two extra hours in the park after everyone else has to leave. Now that information is on the Disney website on the park hours area, so you can go find out which nights are going to give you extended evening hours in Magic Kingdom if you're staying at a deluxe resort. Method number two are those after hours events. Disney's after hours are separately ticketed events that give you three extra hours in the parks, meaning lower wait times for the rides alongside complimentary snacks and beverages. But here's the real big hack when it comes to Magic Kingdom's after hours in 2024. You could potentially see two nighttime spectaculars with just your after hours ticket. While you're more than welcome to purchase regular day tickets and after hours tickets for Magic Kingdom, that can more than double the cost of your park day. So you can also choose to stick with just the after hours tickets if you want to. Magic Kingdom's after hours events run from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. starting on January 11th, 2024, and running on certain nights up until April 8th, 2024. 2024. But even though the party doesn't start until 10, you can still arrive at Magic Kingdom as early as 7 p.m. for a pre-party mix-in. This means you'll get the chance to see Happily Ever After during the regular park hours and the After Hours exclusive spectacular Disney Enchantment. That's right, double the prizes. Now, it can be difficult to figure out, do I want a daytime ticket? Do I want a nighttime ticket? But I will say this, if I had to choose between the two, I would probably choose the After Hours ticket. That might be a hot take because there are going to be much much, much shorter lines. And I also love kind of being out there when the sun's not beating down on you. Now this is going to be January to April, so it's not going to be very, very hot out there. Not too hot anyway, not like the summer, but still to avoid all those crowds and get free sodas and popcorn eh, might be worth it. Now, method number three is the holiday parties. Each year, Magic Kingdom throws two separately ticketed holiday party events, Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Now, there are multiples of these. They start in like August and run through December, depending on which holiday is going on at the time. So you don't have to just choose one night. There's multiple nights you can choose from. During these parties, you'll not only have shorter lines for the rides, but you're also going to be able to experience exclusive seasonal entertainment like stage shows and parades, ride overlays, and fireworks unique to that specific event. You're also going to find a variety of unique character meet and greets throughout the park, like Jack and Sally, who tend to be pretty popular party guests. And holiday parties have a little bit more of a family-friendly schedule, with festivities starting at 7 p.m. On the days that the party happens, Magic Kingdom will close early at 6 p.m., and guests of the party will be able to enter as early as 4 p.m. Lots of p.m.s there thrown at you. <laughs> so with that being said, if you are not planning on going to a holiday party during your next visit, double-check the Disney World Hours and Events calendar online to make sure your park day isn't going to be cut short by one of these holiday parties. Speaking of things you need to be aware of before your visit, there are a couple of major warnings I want to send your way just so you don't get caught in a bind. Do not get caught in these traps. First off, make sure to scout out your spot for Happily Ever After early. 
This is a super popular show, so brace yourself for intense crowds around the Castle Hub and all the way down Main Street, USA. Above all, don't make the mistake of thinking you'll be able to find a great spot with only 15 minutes to spare. I'm not saying you'll never get lucky and find a decent viewing spot at the last second, but more often than not, if you don't get over to Main Street early enough, you won't have much say in where you'll be able to go. Once the main areas start to fill up, cast members need to direct traffic in a way that may prevent you from getting from one side of the hub to the other. Once these sections reach capacity, guests are going to start to be redirected away from the hub and into other areas like the overflow pathway that runs parallel to Main Street. So give yourself plenty of time to find a spot if getting a good view is important to you. Maybe 30 to 45 minutes before might be necessary depending on how good of a spot you're hoping for. That said, of course you can see the fireworks from anywhere in the park, right? There's going to be different camps of thought on, oh, just show up five minutes before you'll be able to see everything and it'll be fine. That's usually true, but if you want that epic viewing spot right there in the hub so you can see all of the projections and see the fireworks and get your pictures just dead on center, then you're going to have to plan a little bit ahead. Now, secondly, avoid going to quick service restaurants around peak dining times anyway, but mobile ordering can get a little hairy in there. So mobile order is available at the majority of Disney World restaurants, and it's generally a good way to save a lot of time standing in line for food. However, when things get busy in Magic Kingdom, mobile order could slap you with a major problem. You might find yourself waiting a long time before you actually get your food, even though you thought you were cutting some corners by mobile ordering. During peak dining time, especially around Magic Kingdom's busier seasons, you could find yourself waiting well over an hour just for lunch, which is what we saw happening during this past Thanksgiving break. That's a long time to wait for chicken tenders, my friends. Now, the best thing you can do to avoid the same fate is simple. Think ahead. Place a mobile order earlier in the day, like even after rope dropping the park and set it for a later pickup time. Then you can pick up your food when you actually are ready to eat. It's also a good idea to plan on a later lunch or earlier dinner. That way, even after you do pick up your food, you could have an easier time finding a free table to eat it, and you won't have to wait quite so long for mobile order to actually make it. All right, are you ready to talk lightning lanes? Because we have got the tips. Well, you don't have to purchase lightning lanes for Magic Kingdom to get on the rides you want to get on. This ticket edition could be a great way to hit up as many rides as you can in a single day without having to wait in forever long lines to do it. So here are a few tips to help you make the most out of Genie Plus if you decide to tack it onto your Magic Kingdom visit. Number one, start making reservations early. You can make your first lightning lane starting at 7 a.m. on the day of your visit for any park, but you can purchase Genie Plus as early as midnight. That way you don't have to scramble at 7 a.m. to purchase Genie and grab your first lightning lane. Now, important reminder, you can only book one lightning lane at a time, so make sure to have your top ride picked out and ready to snag. Two, figure out which rides to book first. Even though you've purchased Disney Genie Plus, doesn't mean you're automatically guaranteed to get all your priority rides all at once. So on Magic Kingdom's busiest days, Genie Plus not only has the tendency to sell out, but certain lightning lanes can book up solid before the afternoon rolls around. See why getting up at 7 a.m. is so critical? The earlier you can start booking your lightning lanes, the better off you're going to be. So which lightning lanes should you plan to book first? Generally, Peter Pan's flight is a good option to start with. This ride is very nostalgic and well-loved, but the capacity is pretty low, meaning the line moves slower than a lot of the rides in the park. So getting a lightning lane comes in handy. Another good option to select is Jungle Cruise. This is also a nostalgic ride that tends to keep pretty high wait times throughout the day. During the holiday season, when it's Jingle Cruise, we do see 100 minute waits for this regularly. And now that the Hatbox Ghost is chilling over at the Haunted Mansion, lightning lanes for that ride could book up real fast as well. Third tip, use the 120 minute rule. You can book your next lightning lane when one of three things happens. One, you've used the first one you booked. Two, your first return time window has ended if you miss it. Or three, 120 minutes have passed since you booked your last one. Or 120 minutes after park opening, depending on the situation. That last rule, number three, is what we're talking about right here, right now. Essentially, you can book another lightning lane two hours, 120 minutes after reserving a previous one if the return time for the first lightning lane is more than two hours away. This was sort of an unofficial rule when Genie Plus first debuted, but Disney has since set it in stone. Now let's do an example here, because I know this is confusing. Let's say that at 9 a.m. you booked a Haunted Mansion Lightning Lane with a return time of 2 p.m. 
you don't have to wait until 2 p.m. to make another Lightning Lane reservation. Two hours after you made that reservation, you can make another one. So at 11 a.m., you can choose another attraction and keep hold of that 2 p.m. Haunted Mansion reservation too. And four, be on the lookout for future changes. Disney is currently working on a way for you to plan out your Lightning Lane selections before the day of your park visit in 2024 to give you less time having to worry about strategizing inside the park and more time just simply enjoying your time there. While we're not sure yet about the exact details of these changes, they could completely change the way you plan out your Genie Plus selections. Meaning we'll have more updated Genie Plus videos for you on the horizon. It's time for my favorite part of this video. We are gonna talk food. Don't try to hide it. I can hear your stomach growling from the other side of the screen. So let's highlight some of our favorite places to eat in Magic Kingdom to make sure you're not only fed, but satisfied. All right, for Disney theming, we're gonna recommend Cinderella's Royal Table. Cinderella's Royal Table tends to be the most popular restaurant in all of Magic Kingdom with the hardest to get reservations since it is inside the Cinderella Castle. The food here is fine, it's not great, it's not bad by any means, but what you're really paying for here is the overall experience of eating inside the castle and mingling with the princesses. A meal here for lunch and dinner costs $84 per adult and $49 per kid, but prices tend to be cheaper if you book around breakfast, dropping costs down to $69 per adult and $42 per kid. What a steal! It's not a steal, but you, you gotta do what you gotta do when you're in Disney World. <laughs> Next is Be Our Guest Restaurant. At Be Our Guest, you can dine inside the Beast Castle and you don't even have to be a prisoner to do it. There are three differently themed dining rooms, the Ballroom, the Rose Gallery, and the West Wing. You may also be able to spot the Beast himself walking through the restaurant at select times during your meal. This restaurant only serves lunch and dinner right now. Both feature a prefix menu. It's not how it used to be, but it's how it is now. If Cinderella's Royal Table taught us anything, eating in a castle doesn't come cheap. Currently, a meal at Be Our Guest costs $70 for adults and $41 for kids. In our experience, the food here has been okay, especially the French onion soup, but it's certainly not $70 worth, so you're really paying for the ambiance and setting rather than the food itself. Now, I know, you're like, AJ, so far you've told me two restaurants where the food isn't good, but the atmosphere is good, so are we gonna actually get to some decent food at some point? Yes, I promise that we will. <laughs> <laughs> but these are restaurants I have to tell you about because they are very popular restaurants. The theming is out of this world and incredible. These are kind of our one and done restaurants. Like you have to do it once, but then you don't have to pay that money again. Moving on to Crystal Palace. This is located at the top of Main Street, USA with views of Cinderella Castle outside the dining room windows. During your meal, you'll be able to visit with your 100 acre wood pals like Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and Tigger and Eeyore. The food is served buffet style with options like carved meats, roasted veggies, Walt's favorite chili, and a kid's station too. The food is pretty good, especially for buffet standards with a few unique options like shrimp creole and plant-based curry for those with more adventurous palettes. And Skipper Canteen. All right, here we go. Skipper Canteen is an adventure land and is directly based on the classic Jungle Cruise attraction. According to the Disney legend, Alberta Falls, granddaughter of Dr. Albert Falls, for whom Schweitzer Falls was named, took over the family shipping business and opened up the Skipper Canteen to host guests before or after they go on their Jungle Cruise ride. The eats here are more unique than what you're going to find at most Magic Kingdom restaurants. They're inspired by cuisine from around the world so this is definitely a good choice for more adventurous palettes. Make sure to walk around and take in all the decor here. There are a ton of details that are easy to miss if you're not keeping a sharp eye out. Now, we love sitting in the SEA room. This is a secret room behind a secret bookshelf wall door thing. It's really cool. So that's the room I always recommend to sit in. Now, what about the underrated good stuff, right? We're gonna start with Plaza Restaurant. The Plaza Restaurant takes place in a bright and airy dining parlor that serves classic meals such as the Plaza Club sandwich, meatloaf, and good old banana splits. This table service is well known for being one of the more reasonably priced sit-down options inside the park as far as Disney prices are concerned. Entrees typically ranging between 19 and $26 each. And Liberty Tree Tavern. 
LTT has all you care to enjoy Thanksgiving food served all year long. Seriously, how can you beat that? The theming isn't super Disney, but it is super history. If you want to find dining rooms themed after influential U.S. historical figures, that is definitely what you're going to find here. So there's still some interesting decor to see, plus it's a learning experience. But what really seals the deal for me here is dessert. The ooey gooey toffee cake is not something to skip out on. It's basically a warm toffee cake served with vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce, and it's one of my all-time favorite desserts in Disney World, hands down. And if you ask me what toffee cake is, I won't be able to tell you because I think it's more than the sum of its parts, but it kind of seems like a cross between a chocolate chip cookie dough situation with like toffee added in. Surprised to see Tony's Town Square on this list? Don't be. This Main Street restaurant has really been stepping up its game lately. Tony's Town Square is based on the Disney animated film Lady and the Tramp and serves Italian-inspired entrees both inside their main dining room and out on their patio seating. So what has really caught our attention here lately? Well, some cheesy stuff. Really cheesy stuff. Tony's now has foot-long mozzarella sticks on their appetizer menu that are served with spicy tomato sauce, but you can get them with a classic marinara if you don't want that heat. And the garlic bread, also found on the appetizer menu, comes with a Parmesan fondue served on the side, which you can pour all over that carby concoction with reckless abandon. And the tortellini al forno, an actual entree this time, has both cheese and chili with plenty of Italian sausage spread throughout, so there's a lot of heat here. Way to go, Tony. We knew you could do it. Moving on to quick, cheap, and easy. We're gonna start at Columbia Harbor House, which is our most recommended counter service, quick service, fast food location in the park. Columbia Harbor House serves up surf and turf with eats like lobster rolls, a shrimp boil, grilled salmon, and chicken tenders. There's plenty of indoor seating here. Hooray for air conditioning. Don't forget to set up stairs. Fewer people know that that's there. And the theming is very on par with its Liberty Square setting. It's not a super Disney-fied atmosphere or anything, so younger kids might not think it's quite as fun as some of the other options in the park, but believe me, there's more seating upstairs. You can actually see the parade from some of the seating upstairs, which is cool, literally, because of air conditioning. Now, Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. This may not have the most authentic Mexican food you'll ever eat, but it's still a decent spot to grab a quick bite. I'm also a big supporter of the queso here. It's white queso. I really, really like it. You can add it to your meal for just a dollar. The Friar's Nook in Fantasyland is a hidden gem tucked within view of the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. You never quite know what the Friar's going to be serving up next, which is actually part of the fun. This is one of those places where Disney kind of tests out some stuff every once in a while. Currently, you're going to find lots of savory options here, including loaded tater tots and hot dogs, along with mac and cheese and bratwurst. And don't forget, they serve up hot breakfast items on the go here as well. While Sleepy Hollow refreshments may have very limited outdoor seating options and absolutely no indoor seating options, the food is still good enough that we come to eat here all the time. The funnel cakes and Mickey waffles are great, but the real gems are the fresh fruit waffle sandwich and the sweet and spicy chicken waffle sandwich. They've also got a hand-dipped corn dog all day long, as well as turkey legs available after 9 p.m. only. Now how about snacky stuff? Let's go to Main Street Confectionery. When you need something to satisfy that sweet tooth, the best place to stop in Magic Kingdom is Main Street Confectionery. This old-fashioned classic candy shop is your one-stop shop for cookies, candies, you can make your own popcorn here, all things sweet. This is also a mobile order location, don't forget. Now, the spring rolls found outside Adventureland aren't your average spring rolls. These flavors swap out often, but each tends to provide a savory, crispy, flavorful, and slightly filling snack to keep you satisfied till your next meal. Recently, we've seen the pepperoni pizza spring rolls and cheeseburger spring rolls here, though we tend to place the cheeseburger spring rolls on a pedestal above all other spring roll options because they're just that good. Every once in a while, you do see different flavors pop in here. Along with hot and savory spring rolls, Adventureland comes in clutch when it comes Comes to icy and sweet stuff too. There are two places where you can grab a signature Dole Whip treat inside this section of the park. The first is over at Aloha Isle, where you'll not only find that classic pineapple Dole Whip, but also Dole Whip floats and various flavors that you can swirl with the classic pineapple, like raspberry and coconut. Our favorite thing on the menu here is the Tropical Serenade, which was originally introduced during Magic Kingdom's 50th anniversary. It features Pog, which is passion fruit, orange, and guava juice, with coconut Dole Whip and an upside down pineapple cake pop too, which reminds me of my other favorite thing on the menu here, the pineapple upside down cake with Dole Whip on top. That's always been one of my favorites. 
Meanwhile, over at Sunshine Tree Terrace, which used to be Aloha Isle, and now it's Sunshine Tree Terrace, and that's for all the old school Disney fans here, because lots of folks don't even know that. You can pick up different Dole Whip flavors like orange and strawberry, or you can make a float out of beverages like root beer, Coca-Cola, Fanta Orange, Fanta Strawberry, Powerade, Mountain Berry Blast, which we do not recommend with chocolate ice cream, or Sprite, served with your choice of Dole Whip or soft serve. So let's talk Gaston's Tavern really quickly here. Gaston's doesn't have a whole lot on the menu, but it really doesn't need to have a whole lot because those cinnamon rolls exist and would overshadow anything else anyway. These cinnamon rolls are warm and gooey and sweet and practically perfect. Plus they're the size of your head, making them super easy to share. Next up, we're gonna talk about where to escape when things get stressful, cause they will. You know how I mentioned before that Magic Kingdom is a pretty packed place? Wasn't kidding. The crowds here can be unbearable at times, especially during the holidays and on those weekends and in the afternoons. And when you combine all three together, may the odds be ever in your favor, my friend. Fortunately, there are places inside the park that can help you get away from the thick of the bottlenecked pathways and forever long queue lines. While there are a lot of attractions in Magic Kingdom, some are way more chill to hang out in than others. I'm talking about the attractions that usually have very low wait times and give you the opportunity to sit back and relax for a decent amount of time. These include shows like Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, Hall of Presidents, and Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, which all usually have minimal wait times comparatively. And once you're inside, you can just ease into your seat and breathe and enjoy the show and maybe even enjoy the air conditioning even more. Another place that's kind of tough tucked away and out of the direct line of Magic Kingdom traffic is near the gazebo in Liberty Square. You'll find this gazebo right before you get to Ye old Christmas Shop. During events like Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, this is usually where characters like Santa Claus will meet and greet, so this tip only applies during normal park hours. If a character meet and greet isn't happening there, you're good to go. But when it's not crowded, it can be a real nice spot to reclaim your personal bubble. And finally, don't forget about Tom Sawyer Island. Even though Frontierland is a big old construction zone right now, Tom Sawyer Island is still open for business. To get there, you'll need to take a small raft that runs to and from shore regularly. And the island is a great place to explore if you want something a little more off the beaten path. A lot of people don't go over there, even on busy days. It's way less people-y. Now, bonus tip, don't forget that leaving Magic Kingdom is an option you can consider. I know that can be hard to wrap your head around, considering you paid for tickets to be inside the park, so you want to be inside the park all you can. But sometimes those Magic Kingdom crowds will win. And when that happens, you'll want to wave the white flag and escape over to one of the nearby monorail resorts for a little bit, just to walk around, browse the gift shops, maybe grab a bite to eat. Then when you're feeling all nice and tranquil again, you can head back to the Magic Kingdom for more chaos. We love Magic Kingdom, we really do, but there's one major part we loathe about it, and that's the transportation, the getting to and from. It is not as easy as getting to the other three parks, where you can drive yourself over, park, and just walk right up to the front gates. Instead, it's a whole process if you wanna drive yourself or take a ride share, a good neighbor resort bus, over to the park. First, you get to the parking lot, easy enough. Then, depending on where you're parked, you're either gonna have to walk or take a tram to the transportation and ticket center. From there, you have gotta decide whether you want to ride the ferry or the monorail, which will be a little bit of a wait either way, especially if you arrive first thing in the morning. And finally, you'll be dropped off at the front gates of the park, but you'll have to wait in line to scan your ticket. You think that's bad? Just wait till after the fireworks when you have to do the whole thing in reverse with everybody else who's exiting the park at the same time. There are moments that make me question why I put myself in these situations in the first place. Now, if you're staying at a Disney World resort, you will have access to those free hotel buses, which can help you bypass all the transportation and ticket center hassle completely. However, that doesn't mean you're gonna bypass all the crowds. In the mornings before the park opens, the transportation lines can be a little chaotic and you won't have any lightning lanes to help you out there. There's no surefire way to avoid the chaos that is the Disney buses, but if you can figure out what time they start running each day, then you can plan to get up and around early and try to get ahead of the rush. It's also important to plan any of your advanced dining reservations around these potential time sucks. If you have a breakfast reservation for, say, Cinderella's Royal Table, then you'll want to give yourself plenty of time to get over to the park. Or you can always book a stay at one of the hotels along the monorail line, like the Polynesian Village Resort or Grand Floridian or the Contemporary. That way you can walk to Magic Kingdom. It's close to your room at all times, but those do come at a pretty steep price point. As far as the end of the night crowds are concerned, do you know that phrase, if you can't beat them, join them? Yeah, ditch that motto for Magic Kingdom. Rework it into, if you can't beat them, avoid them at all costs. Instead of joining the masses and having to wait in thick, thick crowds just to get back to your hotel at the end of the day, 
stick around Magic Kingdom a little bit longer. Enjoy the castle views, do a little shopping, maybe enjoy a snack. The main street shops and quick services like Casey's Corner and the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor stay open for 30 to 60 minutes after the park closes for anyone looking to make some last minute purchases. That way you can spend your time waiting for the lines to go down inside this pretty park instead of being forced to stare at the backsides of other guests for half an hour or more. And don't forget, you can also get in line for a ride in Magic Kingdom right up until the park actually closes. So hop in line for one of those popular rides and you'll still get to ride and then you can leave when everybody else is gone. Now, are you ready for a little extra spice? Magic Kingdom has even more to offer than just rides and restaurants and fireworks. They've also got other fun options that'll add that extra flavor and excitement to your already exciting day. For example, the afternoons in Magic Kingdom are filled with Disney characters, beloved songs, and larger-than-life floats in Disney's Festival of Fantasy Parade. Check the My Disney Experience app for updated show times during your visit. Fun fact, a reserved viewing area is available for Festival of Fantasy if you book a lightning lane for it. Those who book a Festival of Fantasy Lightning Lane will be given a return window for one of the parade showings. When the time comes, you'll report back to the Castle Hub directly in front of the statue of Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse, aka the Partners statue. Here you're going to find a roped off area for that VIP parade viewing. Now, kids, check this out. If you're between the ages of 3 and 12, you can get a specialty Disney makeover at Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique in Fantasyland. The Fairy Godmother's Apprentices, aka some uber talented cast members, will pamper kids with a variety of beauty services, including hair and makeup, costumes, and more. Generally, Disney recommends making a reservation for this one since availability can fill up quickly, but you can always check on the day of your visit to see if any last minute openings are available. Feeling left out, adult friends? Don't worry, there's a Disney makeover spot for you too. This is for all ages and it's a bit more permanent. When you find the red and white striped pole, you'll know you've arrived at the Harmony Barbershop, which is decked out to look like an authentic Victorian barbershop, complete with old fashioned barber chairs and decor. Here you can get a haircut, beard, or mustache trim, but if you want an eye-catching Disney do, a colorful not-so-hidden Mickey can be applied to your hair with gel and glitter. That's pixie dust for an additional charge. You may also want to commemorate your kid's first haircut here with Harmony's first haircut package, complete with a cute certificate, specialty Mickey ears, and a snip of your kiddo's first lock, along with some pixie dust for prosperity. If maybe you feel like you haven't fit more than enough steps into your day, ha, you can always trek up the stairs at the Swiss Family Treehouse to explore the rooms of past adventurers, as well as get a stunning view across the park from that six-story high summit. And a pirate's adventure, Legend of the Seven Seas, is available to you too. This is a free and interactive Pirates of the Caribbean themed treasure hunt that takes place throughout Adventureland. You can stop by the Crow's Nest near Pirates of the Caribbean to start your journey and complete your five missions. Each one takes approximately 20 minutes to complete and does not need to be done consecutively, so you can stop and start again throughout your day. And then there's Disney's Main Street vehicles, which tote guests up and down Main Street USA to make you feel like a character in a cavalcade. This is nostalgia to the max. Now, the Main Street vehicles typically only make trips to the front of the park and to Cinderella Castle in the morning, so be sure to hit up the park early if you want to ride on one of these turn-of-the-century vehicles. Now, despite Magic Kingdom's high crowds and Florida's unruly temperatures, your Disney World vacation can still become one of your very favorite family vacations of all time. Just keep checking back here with us as we continue to learn more about these updated release dates and future park additions and super hidden hacks. And don't forget to download our ultimate guide to Magic Kingdom digital download over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Magic Kingdom. We've also got ultimate guides for all the other parks, so you can go check those out next. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.